Hi, my name is Greg with Rocky Mountain Tiny Houses. We're based out of Durango, Colorado. Uh, we're here at the Colorado Tiny House Festival this weekend, and my wife and I brought our own personal house. This is, uh, it's not quite done. We're about 90% complete, but we're calling this house the San Juan. It's got uh, quite a few interesting features and I'd like to show you. So we're on the outside real quick. This is a 24 foot trailer, technically corner to corner is 24 feet. The trailer made did some custom touches for us. They added a 30 degree V nose. And then from the V nose, we always we tilt up about 15 degrees too. So it's a compound angle, kind of looks like the bow of a ship. You know, it was, I wasn't trying to go for a ship, but it kind of turned out that way. And everyone says it looks like a ship. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> this is our full-time home. We're going to move in. We've been living tiny in my smaller house. The first one I built, it's a little 16 foot. Two people, two dogs, really cramped. You know, it was never designed for two people. So when Steph and I got married, we kind of knew we'd be building a bigger, nicer house for the both of us. And so this is the result of that. And so, you know, being a professional builder, you want a nice house, you might as well do some cool things. And, you know, I've got the tools and the know-how to do some of these things. So I was saying it was 24, but it feels more like a 26. Is kind of, what we tell people it's more like a 26 foot house. So we've got 90% uh, reclaimed material on the outside. So on the passenger side wall, uh, that's all barn wood. And we'll see these portholes from the inside in a little bit, but those are, you know, real authentic portholes in a geometric pattern. The barn wood is a sunray kind of shape to match up with the, the roof line. Uh, we did a, it's reclaimed corrugated wainscot, and that wraps around most of the house. And then on the, the rear part, that is, I've always called it 5V crimp. Some people call it five star. It's a real popular roofing for barns and agricultural buildings back in the day but we found some of that in Denver at a, a repurposed store and thought, why not it looks cool so that's sort of the siding the roofing is all new material I don't like to put reclaimed stuff up there I need the durability and that's just corrugated uh, 7 8 corrugated 26 gauge a little thicker so um, it, it's it we thought it would uh, be troublesome trying to bend it to the radius of the roof, but it actually, we just started in the low spot and worked our way out and it, it really just conformed kind of nicely and we didn't have to do anything special, really. It was gentle enough slope that it, it fit. Uh, you know, another cool thing about the outside, uh, the French doors, those, you know, the door is your portal into your home. And so a lot of people say, even if you're building big homes, that's sort of, that's one of those things you should put money into. You know, it's curb appeal. It's like that's your entrance. And so that's we put a lot of uh, time making these doors. They're all handmade in my shop. Uh, my local glass guy was able to cut water jet that tempered glass for the door panes, and we also got really nice hardware. We didn't want just basic hardware so you'll see we'll do some close-ups it's kind of a Victorian French knob sets and then even the hinges are pretty fancy too it's not my typical style but my wife she's a, a Francophile and so she likes some of the old European stuff and flair so that's kind of where that you'll see some other touches like that too also uh, you know notable is the fold down porch so when we travel uh, the porch folds up and then the awning, which is two solar panels, it's an aluminum frame, two solar panels, that folds down on top of. And I'll get you a picture of what that looks like when it's all folded up. And it's, you can't tell from where we're at, but that portion of the house is actually recessed three inches. So there's a little offset so that all that stuff can fit in that recess. And we're not sticking out past our eight six because we framed the house at eight foot four. Our siding is right at 8.6. You know, we might even be just a, a pinch over in some places. So we were really pushing the, the width limit on that. So I did not want my porch or awning to stick out past that. So that's why the wall is recessed in a little bit. The backside has a really cool decorative feature. So that's all shakes on the rear and it has a color gradient, seven shades of blue. So we start with a near white and it gets darker towards the, the big circle window and then it lightens back up towards the top. Yeah, it's just this really cool, it's a real simple thing to do, but the effect is, is just really eye popping. Trailer made also welded on a, a hitch receiver on the rear because we knew we'd be traveling with this house a little bit. 
So, you know, as you can see, we got a bike rack, we got our two bikes, and in between, you know, shows, we can just hop on a bike and get a little exercise, take the dogs for a run. And that's, that's kind of a nice feature, especially if you're towing with something. If you don't have room on your truck to carry extra stuff, that, that's a good way to carry bikes or boats or extra cargo, whatever else you might need. That's the main things on the outside, roof shape, materials, and uh, porch awning. Uh, like I, I was saying earlier, that that's 720 watts, is two panels. So when we're on the road, that's enough power for all our lights, our fans, our laptop. It's not quite enough for the fridge and some bigger, you know, we'll, we'll have a mini split in here too. It, it's not enough for that. But for those things, uh, you know, we, we'll have enough wattage for that. And then we're parked back home, which is, that's our, our primary parking is back in Durango. I've got three more panels. It's another 750 watts, and then we're about 1.5 kilowatts at that point. And then with the batteries that we have, that that's a big enough system to run the fridge and the mini split and everything basically. They're uh, Centennial. They're 400 amp hours. They're really big, six volt batteries. They add 500 pounds to the house, but it's kind of for being off grid. It, it's it's kind of a necessary evil to tote those things around. But so we got you know 1600 amp hour total power on those things. I want to say they were probably like 500 a piece. What would be really cool, and I think this will happen in a few years with the, the lithium technology comes about, you can get twice the capacity for half the weight, but also like three times the cost. <laughs> so, yeah, right now. But, but the trade-off I think is, is worth it. So cool. well, we're going to go inside. So now we're on the inside of the house and if you thought the outside was cool, you know, we're just getting started. There's really, they say the devil's in the details and this house is, is no exception to that. We just went crazy on the details because we weren't having to pay a builder, so time wasn't an issue for us. And we just, some projects, I'm like, well, I don't care if it takes a week. Let's just do it and make it nice and cool and, and share that with people. So, you know, perhaps the most unique feature on the inside is the elevator bed. And people have done elevator beds before, and they're not. we're not the first one to do it. But... You know, we wanted a slightly different take. You know, most people are using garage door motors and motorized things. We would decided to do a manual system, even though we're off grid and we probably will have power all the time. I'm like, well, if, if something fails and I don't have power and then we're on the road, we want to go to bed. And I, I can't let the bed down, you know. So I came up with, um, it's all garage door parts. It's a chain hoist that's geared down to make it easier. And then the drums, the little pulleys, those are just uh, the torsion bar on a garage door. That's, that's the drums that pull, that pull the cable. So it's all um, off the shelf parts. I had to make some of the brackets to mount it to the wall. And, you know, that was a little tricky, but in the end it works pretty well. I'll show you. Um, these guys, they flip out so that the bed has a spot to rest on. The back corners are fixed, so we don't have to flip those. So the chain keep right here, that keeps it from coming down. It will come down on its own. The bed's about 150 pounds, and so it's not terribly heavy, but it's heavy enough that uh, it'll. Yeah, you don't want to be under it when it comes down. So that's all we do to let it down. And we have been living in the past two weeks on the road and it's quite nice to sleep in this thing because we don't need a ladder. We can both just hop up here, queen size bed, two people. And then we don't wake, well we do wake up and we're, we've got these 360 views. We have these big windows on, you know, a circle window and these two big square windows all around us. So it's just like, it's actually, we don't have blinds, so it's almost a little too much. Sun's been rising at like 5.30. We don't usually get up till 7, so it's been kind of waking up early with the sun. It's, it's cool, but it's just, it's a little too bright. We're going to get some window coverings. She's already picked out some pleated insulated blinds to come in here. Now this guy, we're not quite sure. I think it's just going to end up being some kind of drape that we, you know, you can't make a circle blind, so... <laughs> I think it'll be some sort of drape um, that, that we hang up here somehow. It's a really easy method. This material is just quarter inch pine, tongue and groove. They call it a V-edge. You can buy it at Home Depot. I buy it 
in bulk. I get like pallets because we do so much of this stuff. Uh, I get a discount and I got, it's all over the shop. And well, it's thin, it's light. And this is a real, you'll see a lot of this stuff in tiny houses all the time. But what you do for the whitewash, so that you, like you said, you can let some of the wood grain pop through. Like there, you can see a knot, you can see some of the variations in the wood. You can buy a pickling stain off the shelf, you know, a Minwax or some other products out there. Or you can go the old school route and that's just get some white paint, water it down 50-50 with water. So just a one-to-one -one mixture. And it just w really washes the paint down. And then that's how you get your whitewash. And then it is kind of a thinner finish, so it would be a good idea to put clear coat. Just one, at least one if not two. So that clear coat will help it stay a little more durable. You won't, you know, fingerprints and you rub things all the time. It just keeps it a little cleaner. Well, let me back up uh, the back wall is actually just drywall, quarter inch drywall. So we have SIP framing, it's a panel construction, it's OSB skins, both sides. So we're not having to try to hit studs everywhere. That's one of the main reasons I like SIPs, because it just gives you a solid substrate in the entire house. And you know, that made putting these brackets up easier. I didn't have to have a stud, I can screw straight to those SIPs. Straight in the wall, you just have to use coarse thread screws, and they give you numbers, the SIP company, and they're like, this screw, can hold, you know, pull out is 250 pounds, shear is, you know, 1,000 pounds. And so you can do the math, and I've got like 10 screws per bracket, you know. I know they're going to hold just based on the ratings from the SIP company. So she did, She wanted the, the back wall to be sort of an accent wall, so it's a, it's a minty kind of color with some, you know, decorative trim to sort of give it some definition, and it's not so flat. Both when the bed is down and when it's up, you, you get you see both aspects of that. So the ceiling, coming back to this, this is actually locally milled um, Aspen. It's a shiplap. This is not an off-the-shelf product. The thing with this curvy roof is that you need a, a wood that can twist a little bit. It's So it's thin to conform to the shape of the roof. And because we have a, a warped surface, you can't use a um, I couldn't run the boards that way because what happens, it changes. The length of my rafter is continuously changing. So at the lowest slope, that's the short rafter, and at the longest part, that's the longest rafter. So my distance can be anywhere from 42 inches to 52 inches. So the trick to get around that is to run them at a 45 degree angle. So they'll start in a corner and then wrap, they'll, they'll wrap around and they'll fit that shape. And that's why you see them at an angle like that. We had to do the same thing for the roof decking. You know, you can't just use a flat sheet of plywood. We had to rip it into eight inch strips and then put it at a 45 and then trim all the ends off. So it's a lot of cutting, a lot of time. You know, sometimes it's really hard to just pull a tape on those measurements you sort of just have to like get it close and then see if it fits and then chop it you know cut long take a blade off here and there <laughs> so it was painstaking but you know the result it's just mind-blowing you know we've done this on one other house before so it was kind of a no-brainer to just use it again it's actually the laziest thing i could have done well and the wife she picked she wanted it's white cotton rope we didn't want poly you know a plastic rope we didn't want a brown vanilla rope because she wanted to keep it light and airy in here. Um, I can jump off but we also she bought this little antique step stool which makes it a lot easier and safer too but we're young keep young couple athletic I don't mind just hopping off unless the dog you know the dogs when we go to bed that's that's where they sleep and we don't have the other bed in here right now because we took it out but um, I guess I'll raise it back up and show you some of the other stuff and then you get to see how it works going up. It's not hard, it's only about 30 pounds of force because of the gearing. coming undone accidentally. So when it's up, then we have our living room configuration. So basically we got double uh, function in this space. 
and that keeps your trailer shorter. You know, it's, this is a way to have a downstairs bedroom without pulling your trailer another eight, another six or eight feet. So you're just making better use of the vertical space. I mean, it's similar to a loft, but we don't have to climb it, which is the nice feature about it. I mean, we've, I've lived tiny for five years, a little A-frame, tiny loft, real small, and a ladder. And I'm just, I'm over it. So <laughs> this is so much better than having to climb a ladder or stairs for that matter. Our living room is real simple. It's a built-in couch. We've got, the cushions aren't in yet. We ordered them, so this will be, she picked some kind of um, suave gray color to go in the cushions. And back here, we're gonna have a little pool. This guy, we've done this in a few other builds. This is our little laptop storage, so that flips open. This will fit two laptops in here. Charging station, it just comes back down, then it's an armrest. I didn't necessarily want to do a glue up here, but I, I ran out of wood, and so I had to just, I had all these scraps laying around, so I glued them up and made that little guy. We've got, and then matches, there's some other glue ups you'll see in the house too. That's one of those little details, you know, that takes more time, but you know, it gives it a little pop when it's done. So, so I flipped around, I'm in the kitchen space now, and probably the beginning of the kitchen space is the, the dining, area we have two dogs we needed a spot for dog food storage so that's that's all dog food storage right there and we've been on the road so you know it's actually being used and then when it's not storage it's a bench this uh table is slight there's a slot that we built into the cabinet right here it's real simple it's nothing there's no hardware but this table we can move it around you know, uh, I have to build a leg for the corner when it's all the way out because it can't quite hold itself up. But, you know, at this configuration, we can put two people here. We've got another bar stool. Uh, we could potentially seat five people at this little dining thing, and it's real simple. And then when we don't, we want to reclaim the space back. It just shoves back in, and then it's out, it's out of the way. Maybe a little extra prep space for, you know, for the show, even just right here it's enough to do some work on laptop space, desk space, or just one person having breakfast or dinner. Yeah, if it's shoved all the way in, it ain't coming out. I mean, I'm putting a little bit of force on it. It's not moving, so. <laughs> I hope it stays that way. I think over time it's gonna just start wearing out, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> this is probably one of the uh, from the show, the feedback, this is like, everyone loves the counter. That's like the next best feature other than the elevator bed. This is a, they, well, I don't know if, it, they call it a Texas black mesquite. I didn't know that such a thing existed, black mesquite, but, you know, I, I really wanted a, black, a mesquite counter for the Southwest Flare and the turquoise inlay. And so I, we shopped and shopped and we just couldn't find a big enough piece, good enough price, the the character we were looking for. Of all the places I looked, eBay happened to be the source to find this. There was this guy down in Palmer, Texas. He just has his own little mill and just sells pieces of whatever he's got going on. He had the he had just enough. This is glued, it's not one piece. I had to glue it up. But from all the pieces, I think I only had one little square left of scrap. That's how like down to the wire we got. And I bought every piece he had. So <laughs> it worked out, it's beautiful. The turquoise, everyone wants to know how we did it. Super simple. So the wood has natural cracks in it. And I was able, there's a gym store in Durango. I was able to purchase some raw turquoise. It's, they call it Sleeping Beauty. You know, it's a really sought after turquoise in the Southwest. And you just crush it, put it in a pipe and crush it. Put all the pieces in there and you epoxy over it. That holds it, sand it flush. And then we've got a really nice uh, Murdox finish over this stuff. So it's like, one of the best finishes we could possibly find for Murdoch's. wood count. Murdoch's, yeah. We've got a, a farmhouse sink. It's my understanding, it, they call it a, comp a, a granite composite. So I think they're taking a natural white granite, crushing it, and then they're putting, a, they're gluing it back up. So it's an engineered stone, kind of like silestone, similar thing. It's natural, but it's, it's engineered so that it's tougher and it's more stable and, you know, it is heavy, but it's not as heavy as like a, some of the stones, the bowls that we've seen before. She wanted white. That's the main reason we went with this. We could not find a white metal 
sink or, or acrylic is going to scratch and ding. So for us, this was the best option. Some kind of, it's a 24 inch engineered stone sink. We bought, I think it's a depot actually carries, you know, not, it's not a stock item. It was a special order, but it's about 450 bucks. I, I've seen some, you know, apron sinks go for a thousand, right. even in a stainless or yeah. copper or something. Yeah. So it's actually, that's another reason we picked it was price. It was the best price we could find. We made all the cabinets in house cause it's uh, well, we're over the wheel wells and it's a pain in the butt taking a stock cabinet, modifying it for fenders. So it's just easier to build our own. Plus with the apron, apron sinks, one of those other things, it's hard to get a stock cabinet that fits an apron so we just ended up making all of it but that's cool we get more storage you know I get this little feature I can put in here I get four drawers these are RV slides so when I'm driving they won't come out they're really you got to really yank it to initiate it the RV slides you know I buy them from RV like adventurerv.net or something like that there's an RV specific store stock cabinets if you have them in your tiny house they're just gonna roll. You're gonna get to where you're going and they're just gonna be like that. <laughs> we don't have it done yet, but this bay, it, this whole thing will be a pull out and that's our trash and our recycling. You know, Steph is always real big. You gotta have spots for uh, trash recycling, shoes, dog food, and oh, laundry. That's the other one. So just everyday things that a lot of tiny house dwellers don't really think about until they actually get into their house. And they're like, oh man, I didn't, and think about that and so trash recycling dog food if you have dogs laundry those are those are four and shoes those are the five big things she always talks about so that's sort of the cabinetry real simple you know you'd be surprised how hard it is to find a range that just has really plain simple lines they always have extra bins and stuff that just kind of makes it clunky looking we wanted something really just plain Jane and we found this Brown. I think it was maybe 200 bucks but it, it fit this space it was exactly what we were looking for it's got lights fan and we always tell our customers you always want to direct vent your range hood you don't want a recirculator cut the hole in the wall get that smoke out of your house it's just gonna be otherwise you're gonna smell like bacon and cooking oil all the time so cut the hole get the air out built this little storage thing above. So, you know, the hoods through the wall, it doesn't come up through here. So that gives us some more storage. And that was another reason for the step stool. So we could get up to the, you know, I can, we can reach this, but I can't reach that top one. So the stool should get us up there. Other than this upper cabinet, we have this shelf. It's like almost seven feet long. It's just one open shelf above uh, this big window we put in. You know, this part's fixed for just a nice big view. Whether you're in the kitchen or you're at the dining, you can just look out that way. And then this guy will open up so we can get a little fresh air, maybe chunk some kitchen scraps at the chickens or something. So Stephanie uh, really resisted the wood countertop, especially next to the sink. She's like, oh, maintenance, I can't do that. You know, I need something tough. So this was sort of our compromise. I got the wood, she got the silestone. So this spot here for whatever the heck she's doing, you know, chopping things, uh, acidic mixtures that could damage the wood, um, flour, you know, pounding, whatever. This thing can take whatever the heck you throw at it. So it's, uh, you know, heat, you can take the pan right off and put it down. It's not, this stuff is rated for that. You know, that would definitely damage the wood. So that was our sort of our solution to having that do it all workspace. Uh, that the wood couldn't handle. So we only have two propane appliances, the, uh, the range and the water heater, on-demand water heater. Yeah, so propane, you know, typically a furnace is a good option for tiny house heat and we still could do propane, but we prefer it. Colorado, you know, it's still kind of a rustic, especially part we're in. Wood stoves are very popular and then that also gives you the option. Well, it, that is a completely off-grid option. You know, propane is kind of off-grid, but if you're if you're in a really cold place and you run out of propane, I mean, you're screwed. So the wood stove, uh, you know, unless you're in a fire ban, but in the wintertime you're not because there's snow everywhere. So <laughs> and in our part of the state, you know, wood stove is a really good option. And we decided to go with the Kimberly. You know, it's the most expensive stove you could possibly get. They're usually like 4000 uh, bucks. They cut us a little deal since it's a show house. 
Yeah, very expensive, but it's also the most efficient. It can it puts out the most heat with the least amount of wood. And part of that is the design. It has secondary combustion, so a lot of times a wood stove, you burn the wood and the gas just goes straight up the flue. And there's still a lot of energy that can be captured from that. And so this thing will will do that. It'll it'll take that secondary gas and ignite it and try to get as much, you know, joules and watts out of that wood as it possibly can. So well the vent comes out the back, so like I said, we're not quite done. We got a few more weeks. The chimney just comes out the back straight up through the roof. You know, everyone keeps asking me to go through the wall or is there something under the thing here? No, it just goes straight up. We don't have it in right now. But we wanted to still, you know, show people for the show what, what it's gonna feel like. So under the stove, this is we'll keep all our wood storage down here. This little overhang that when you first come in this is like shoes that we're just wearing more often, you know, daily. We could just chuck them under there. And then it also, the goal was to be able to sit here too when the fire was running, but I think it, it might be a little too close. So we'll, we haven't fired up yet, so we don't know, but we'll see. That was the goal. It's all tile, Portuguese tile that she found on special somewhere. I just Stephanie bought that. And, you know, a lot of people ask us about tile. Um, just how does it hold up with road travel? And it's, it holds up fine. It's all a matter of, of the details, once again. you got to use, we use a product called OmniGrip. That's the uh, adhesive. It's, not a, it's a modified thin set. And that stuff is bomber. It is so good. It will not, I mean, it's slightly flexible, but the, the holding power um, is just incredible. We had to, like, redo a tile on the subway and um, it got a nick in it so we had to try to I could not pull I had a crowbar I could not pull that tile off I had to bust it with the hammer and chip it out <laughs> that's how good that stuff is and then of course your grout you, you want to use a uh, modified grout it has like a latex and it's, it's flexible too so this above the tile it's just a little decorative metal screen so that we don't have to stare at the side of our refrigerator all the time and it is <laughs> you know, mission accomplished. You can't tell that there's a fridge back there, even unless you, I mean, you can see the door here, but yeah, it works nice. So now we're into our food storage. That's another thing for Steph. You know, we've been on the road, so we're, we've even got some stuff in here, but there's two of them. That breaks up the weight of having one big one. And then sometimes you don't need to pull the whole thing out. You just need to access the portion. So upper and lower, it's all the cleaning supplies for the show. And these just, you know, these are butter. Works really well. Next to the pantry, we're moving into our closet area. So this is all, uh, we did all this woodwork. This dove, I have a jig for cutting dovetails. And I wanted to, you know, have some sort of decorative edges to the woodwork in here. This is all Southwest Walnut, cut from like Arizona. So it's, uh, it's a little lighter than like a Midwest Walnut. And you get that variation. But some people would never know that's walnut, but you know you see it next to that, and <laughs> just an interesting, you know, again, sort of a homage to Southwest. So Steph has her closet here. That's all her. She can do whatever, you know, clothes and storage here. And then we have a his and a hers. So I've got five drawers, and she's got five drawers. And these are cool. We didn't put hardware in these. It's just old school wood slides because, well, it's simpler for one, cheaper. I don't have to buy, you know, $15 a set. And then for three, anytime you're adding hardware, you're losing a half inch on each side. So you lose an inch total over that. And so this is a way to sort of get it. every inch does count in a tiny house. So that's sort of a, a really easy way to do that. Yeah, these didn't budge the entire trip because the well, there's no ball bearings, you know, so there is enough friction to hold them, and then but it's not so much that it's just a pain in the butt to pull them. You do have to pull a little harder than a normal drawer. Sometimes less is more. Simple things go a lot further. Opposite this closet is my closet. This is also the guts of the house. So the water heaters in here, the electric panel. Uh, we're going to have off-grid water, so we'll have a pump. Well, the pump is in here. The tank will sit on top of the loft and help it feed water a little better. And then the batteries, those big four batteries at 500 pounds, they're going to sit in here too. But I still have enough room at the top to put on my shirts. 
And then this would be like underwear and shorts and socks, stuff like that. So the very front of the house is the bathroom. That is our barn door that we made from, we had a bunch of scraps of barn wood from the siding on the outside. So we took a lot of the scraps and made, I make a little jig that cuts those at the right angle and then you just glue them up and put them in there. Yeah, sunray pattern. And then that, this is uh, just plexiglass. We didn't want to put real glass in case it broke or something, but a little lighter. And you can buy a film that you stick to the plexi. So it gives it that frosted appearance for privacy, but you still get some light coming through. This is all um, off the shelf hardware. Sometimes in tiny houses, you don't have the height you need to put those big, you know, commercial barn door rollers. So you can make your own stuff like that. Just a piece of steel, a little ball bearing roller. Pull, it's a pulley, I stole it from a pulley. And then a strap and just put a bolt and it works pretty well. I don't have my stops in yet, but it still works. So the bathroom, it's one of the biggest bathrooms. Um, I've seen in a tiny house and a lot of that has to do with the venos. Like I said, we got 30 degrees coming in and then the wall goes up like that too. So even though I'm 24 feet to here, I'm cheating and I'm gaining quite a bit more space. And that also lets the tub, because the tub is angled, so it lets the tub get shoved further up against the wall. And then the, well, look at that angle lets it do that too. We didn't have to put it this way. We didn't have to put it you know, that way we could angle it and sort of borrow some more space to get in here. So full soaking tub, it's about 900 bucks on signature hardware. And Steph found this um, cool of Victorian faucet. We haven't tried it out yet, but it looks cool. And then it looks like you have a shower option there. Is that something you're just gonna- Yeah, yeah, so we got a, um, you know, bath or wash the dogs with that guy. We got to find, you can get another piece like this that mounts to the ceiling and that would go there. That's how that would work for shower configuration. A little I-beam track for the curtains to come around. We got to stiffen it up a little, but um, mostly functional right now. Uh, the sink, so we got another piece of Live Edge Mesquite that we found locally. And it was, it was almost just the right shape fit the space we had to cut it just a little so we didn't knock anything over here but just kind of naturally had that shape uh, Steph this is a uh, just a bowl Steph it's nothing you know it looks kind of like it is supposed to be a sink but it's just a fancy bowl cut a hole in it silicone the drain in we're not set yet because we're still that's one of those things we got to finish but you know you can see there that's how you sort of do that trick <laughs> And then we'll silicone that and it'll sit on the wood. Simple vessel sink. She, I don't know where she found this thing, this dragon handle. It's uh, English and it's also, that means the threads aren't American, they don't fit. So I had to put a piece of uh, plastic in there and cross thread it to get it to seal, to convert it back to American thread. And then we'll, we're not hooked up on the bottom side either, but you know we've got this crazy little angled door with chevron type pattern so i can get we got a little storage and then all the pipes and guts will be in there for that guy nature's head toilet nothing special there but the, you know the real cool thing about the bathroom is the penny floor so steph uh it took her about three days to lay all of these pennies and it's just a uh, epoxy about an eighth inch layer of, of marine grade epoxy over the pennies and that's what ties it and seals it so pretty dazzling effect so uh this spot here there'll be a linen cabinet or a hutch we're, we're trying to find an antique that fits the space but we're it's a really hard space to deal with so i think we're going to end up making something but it'll be full height all the way up to here so we'll have uh laundry that's our laundry that's dirty laundry on the bottom a hamper that'll pull out T towels, toilet paper, toiletries, whatever, they'll all fit on the top side. So the bottom side of the bed, uh, the ceiling basically when you're sitting in the living room space, uh, is the southwestern motif. Stephanie uh, really, she says it over and over, she did not want to see a piece of plywood when she was sitting on the couch because it's very, 
it's a ceiling. It's only seven feet above you. It's very prominent when you're in this space. So we ended up uh, searching Pinterest and getting some ideas for wood art. And uh, we got, you know, we borrowed some ideas. We sort of modified it to our own taste. And so she picked all these colors and finishes. And it's, it was a lot of cutting. It actually, the hardest part was just drawing it out. We just put it in CAD. And then we figured out the pattern. And then that made it easy to transcribed to the piece of you know sub plywood but then after that it was just you know measure cut check it cut it again <laughs> and uh that's the end result so it turned out nice the second loft is actually it's hard to believe it's all gear storage like we are not it is a very big tall spacious loft and it's got some cool features but we're not uh, you know the elevator beds are primary sleeping and the goal for this was to uh, put our gear. So we're mountain junkies like most people, you know, bikes, river sports, kayaking, paddle boarding. We hunt, we do backpacking, we do, uh, you know, hiking, 14ers. So we got a lot of gear and we needed some place to put that. So that there'll be actually some cubbies and stuff. They're going to break up that space, but that, you know, the sleeping bag will have a spot, the backpack will have a spot, all that. Everywhere will have a place to go. When it's all said and done up there. So that side of the house, the portholes, that'll be, we're going to keep that open. We will put a guest bed up there and that'll also be like um, our little getaway space where we need, we just need, you know, you, sometimes you got to have your space. So that's like, I can go out there and, and tuck in that corner and just hang out or she can do that or whatever. It, it is a neat little space with the portholes up there. So we'll have a, a collapsible ladder. We don't have it shown right now. But this is what this space was intended to be left for. So a little ladder that folds down, shoves up here, or hooks. We might just hook it so you can grab it, un undo it, put it right here, and then go up. That way we're not impeding the flow of, of all this space right here. That's a problem with a lot of tiny houses. They, it's kind of an afterthought. They're like, oh, I know I have to have a ladder to get to my loft, but I didn't really think about where to put it <laughs> when I'm trying to move in and out. So that, for us, that's our solution. We're just not using that space very often. And so the hassle of having to take a ladder out just kind of outweighs the, keeping the, the feeling of openness. Sure, the lighting, we, that's, you know, lighting in a tiny house is super important. And that's one of those other things people kind of have afterthoughts. They, they just, they can't picture, you know, what spaces are going to need light the most when you come in you know you need a right when you come in you need a light um, a general light and then you start breaking it down into task lighting and so like under our bed here we've got built-in lights so at night when we're watching tv or reading a book you know these are just little they're not super bright they kind of uh, it's enough to read but not just wash everything out and hurt your eyes at night time so that's sort of our main light um, we kind of had a steampunk industrial theme going with the lighting and some of the other hardware. So Steph had, she had a lot of fun just hopping online and searching for light fixtures. The fan is actually an antique. It's like, I don't know the year, but it's like 50s, I think. It's an old desk, desk fan. I took the base off. I fabricated a pole and redid the wiring and it actually... Once it gets going, it's sweet. It moves some air in this thing. An old Westinghouse, yeah. And I don't have it turned on, but the little oscillator, it still works too. So it'll, you know, if I can get up there and turn it, it would just be really slow. This moves real slow and it, I mean, you can hear it, but it's nice. Everyone who's been coming through the door, they just, because <laughs> it's been hot the past few days. And with the wood stove, you know, it's it's very centrally located, which is good for heating the whole house. But the heat, with these high ceilings, the, the heat definitely stagnates up there. So that fan will blow that, you know, that was on high. We can put it on low, and we're going to recirculate that air and get it to spread down throughout the house. These two light fixtures uh, are antiques. We picked up from a, an antique store in Denver, just old barn lights, basically. Those are just cheap Home Depot sconces for now, but we're gonna, we bought the parts to do some insulator lights. So once again, we're, I'm with Rocky Mountain Tiny Houses out of Durango, Colorado. You know, we're professional builders. Uh, this is our full-time job, but uh, again, this is my personal house that I'm sharing at the show. 
You can follow us on Facebook, Rocky Mountain Tiny Houses, or Instagram, Greg Tiny House Guy is mine, and then Stephanie is Steph, let's see, it's Steph's underscore tiny underscore life. Yeah, and everything will be linked in the description below. Mm -hmm.